I've got VCDS open here. It's connected to the ECU, which is powered up. And I'm looking for intake air temperature. I'm gonna grab my heat gun here. I'm just gonna turn it on here. Low is all it takes. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna watch that value as I blow some air across it. Oh yeah, look at that. Hi everybody, how are you? My name is Dan Dulac and welcome back to my channel where I am building a V10 powered Ultima Evolution convertible. This is episode number 51 and part two of a three part series where I am reverse engineering the OEM powertrain CAN bus on my R8 slash Huracan drivetrain, both the V10 and paired with a DCT transmission. We're in the process of reverse engineering that to get some key telemetry out of it. RPM, gear position, temperatures like water, oil, transmission temperature. We are doing, I'm gonna cover all of that in part two of this episode. If you missed part one, be sure to go back and check that out. I start from ground zero to the tools I'm using, the software I'm using, and I'm, I'm walking you through all that. So if you missed episode one or part one, of this three-part series. I'll link that in the description below as well so you can kind of get started to where we began. In this episode, we're gonna go track down a few other signals. We're gonna look for temperature, water temp, oil temp, intake air temperature, transmission temperature. We're gonna do that here in this episode. And then, as I mentioned in episode three, we'll go ahead and take all this data and it'll be much more focused on the display side, the MoTeC side of things with the MoTeC dash manager, MoTeC display creator, and obviously the MoTeC C127 dash that I have in the Ultima. So that's a little bit of the background here. Again, go back and check part one if you missed it. This is part two. So without further ado, let's keep going where we left off in part one. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, since we have now three attributes, we have brake switch, throttle position, and RPM for a single CAN ID, 105, let's go ahead and create our first DBC file. So again, the DBC file is important in that the DBC file tells the dash display or any device that's reading CAN values and translating them to human readable, it tells that software how to do the translation. Taking from hex value to a scaled decimal value. So let's go ahead and do that for these three attributes. Let's create a CAN ID for those three. So. I'm gonna close my graphing window here. I've paused the data, so there's, there's no data streaming here. Up under file, I can go to DBC manager. Now I've already got a DBC file in here for the Ultima, but I'm going to create a new one. So right here, I'm gonna say create new DBC. We double click on unnamed file and what you'll see here is a default node. So I'm going to just, just for, for sake of it, I'm gonna call this node name Ultima Evo. I can add any comments, close it. I've got my node name now. I need a new CAN ID. So let's add a new CAN ID here. And we know that this CAN ID is 105 and we know the frame length is gonna be eight, and let's just leave that for now. Then I'm gonna need to add a new signal underneath this CAN ID. So we're gonna add, in this case, the first signal we're gonna do is our brake switch. So I'll just call this brake switch. Let me test your memory here. What was it? It was byte number four, bit position number two. So bit length of one, that was a brake switch. And we know the scale was default because it was just simply an on or off, okay? And we can call this brake switch. Close this. So now we have underneath CAN ID 105, we've got brake switch. Now let's add another new signal. This one is, uh, I'm not gonna name it now. I noticed this kind of a, 
a nuance with this software. Do all your values first, name it last, because as soon as you click on something, it, it changes the name up here. So we know throttle position is byte number six, full eight bits long, little endian. Okay, so that is throttle position. Now I'm gonna name this. Actually, our, our scale there was, we remember, 0.4. And I'm going to name this throttle position. And then the units is percentage. Okay. Now we're going to close this. Now we've got throttle position, brake switch, and one more signal, RPM. So we know our RPM was 16 bits in length. We know the scale was 0.25. And the starting position was bit zero of byte two and then three. And this is where little endian is important because the way the order as it, as it reads these bytes is critical. So let's play with this little endian, the byte order here to show you what happens when we span two bytes. So we've got the byte order set to little endian. So the way this is gonna read is from here to the left and then it's gonna start back down on byte three at bit position 24 and then finish over to the left for and finish at byte position 31. So that's how that reads. Now if I deselect this, so make this big endian, it changes my byte order here. So in order to read the full bytes two and three for RPM, again, assuming this was big endian, you'll notice now the bits read from left to right. Starting at bit position 23 right here, reads to bit position 18, jumps down to bit position 31, and then over to bit position 24. So typically, this is obviously as you would read a, a book, you're reading from left to right. That's big endian. Little endian is just the opposite. You're reading from right to left. So that hopefully that gives you an idea of where and why the byte order is important because again depending on the order the way you add the hex values the which converts to decimal the way you add those together will change depending on the order in which you read them it may sound a bit complicated again once you have an idea on what your car is your can bus software and your dash or whatever however it reads big indian or little indian that will hopefully clear things up for you. That's gonna be important so that your decimal values are correct when you read off of your CAN bus. All right, so now we've got our very first uh, DBC file, okay? So let's close this. I'm actually going to remove that one. I'm gonna rename this one. We'll call this Ultima Evo DBC for YouTube. Save. Ultima Evo DBC YouTube. Save. Good. All right. So we've got this loaded up. I can close all these windows now. All right, now that we've got a new DBC file created, we can go and replay the data against that translation file, that DBC file. So. Let's give that a shot here. First thing you're gonna notice is my uh, attribute, my can ID 105 is named Ultima Evo, just like we named it in the DBC file. DBC file is loaded. We're gonna go ahead and start this data. Click play here. And here's the key. We're gonna click this interpret frames. I'm gonna expand all rows here. Now we can see our translated data. We see our brake switch, again, a zero or a one. One means it's on, zero means it's off. And then we have our throttle position here as well, including our brand new RPM metric. So as you can imagine, when you have lots of CAN IDs listed here, as you're making these translations with your DBC file, this data becomes really, really useful. And of course, this is what the dash will read. So. I will take this DBC file and import it into my MoTeC display and now my C127 when it reads directly off the CAN bus will have this translation file 
and it will display the data just like we see here, the exact same value. So again, using Savvy Can, really nice to confirm and validate. You've got your scaling factors right. It corroborates with what the car is actually doing. That's why I use VCDS or any OBD2 a generic scanner can get you data that you can data that you can compare against the calculated values here versus the values that are on the OBD2 reader or VCDS that I use for my car and so you can see that here so it's pretty cool how you can use this and validate back and forth from here the other thing we can do is we can chart this data so what I can do is back to my graphing window I'm gonna load a new graph this time, because we've got a DBC file, you'll notice it recognizes that DBC file. I'm going to choose RPM here, click this copy signal parameters, and it copies all the data that we set in the DBC file when we configured it. Scaling factors set right, little endian set right, the start bit position, 16 bits. This is all correct. I can simply now add this graph, right click, rescale to data, and there we go and it's called RPM in my scale here I can do the same I can add a new graph we can call this one will grab throttle position copy signal parameters that copies it into all these fields add this graph and it's zero now because I'm not uh, this is just idling I'm not hitting the, the throttle here but what you would be able to do is you could scale this down and look for throttle position you can see the throttle position line down here you'd see this bump up as you're as you're hitting it so that's pretty much the setup for finding these initial three attributes the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go and try to find some temperature can ids i'm going to look for water temperature oil temperature transmission temperature i don't really care which we're just going to try to find out where those are which can ids those exist in so it requires a little bit of a different process here so i'm going to let this file play through again this goes from a cold engine all the way up to about 75 degrees celsius which is great because i'll be able to look for values that are steadily increasing as the engine is warming up so let me show you how we're going to go about doing that so recall back when I was sitting in the car capturing live CAN bus data, this is the sniffer view I was looking at here. And down here in this bottom of our CAN ID list, all these attributes are CAN IDs running at two hertz, one hertz, five hertz. This is where I'm gonna to start to look for the temperatures. So I'm gonna look for either coolant temp, oil temp, or transmission temp. I'll just, we'll figure one out first and then we'll look for the others. But I'm gonna start down here in this bottom of this list where all of these low frequency CAN IDs exist. All right, so here we are with my recorded file. Again, cold start up to 75 degrees Celsius. Here where we left off was just looking at CAN ID 105. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna actually deselect this one and I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom of this list where again, my, my lower frequency CAN IDs are. Again, those five hertz, two hertz, one hertz CAN IDs. So that's going to be down here starting at around 500. So let's select all of these. Again, these are all my low frequency CAN IDs. Again, where I suspect temperature is going to be transmitted. So let's select those. We're going to start to play back this data. And again, because these are lower frequency, you can see the messages, the frames coming in are coming in uh, much slower as well. Again, I'm gonna put this in overwrite mode. If I click interpret frames, it's not gonna do anything because again, we don't have a DBC file that can decode any of these frames. So interpret frames isn't gonna do anything. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna let this play all the way through the entire file start to finish because then what I can go do is I can go inspect each individual CAN ID uh, byte by byte and look for values, decimal values that are increasing. Now, one of the other tricks I learned through this process was before I started the car with the ignition on without starting it, I used my scanner, VCDS, and again, generic OBD2 scanner could do this for you too, to see what the cold start temperature was before I started the engine. 
So in this case, I looked at water temperature, I looked at oil temperature. So I know my starting temperature for water in oil was 10 degrees Celsius. But as you'll see, we'll, we'll look at some of the lines, the, the raw decimal values too, and we'll see, it'll, it'll, it'll be pretty simple to call out once we see these lines increasing as the engine is getting warmer and warmer. All right, come back over here. We can see this replay is almost complete. And there it goes. We've replayed the entire recording of that file, zero to about what I think, if I remember, 75 degrees Celsius. But we're going to confirm that once we find the temperature data here within the uh, CAN bus ID. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're going to use a new tool. So I'm going to go up here to the reverse engineering tools and I'm gonna look at the frame data analysis. So this brings up a different view, again, for just the CAN IDs that I played back. We're gonna look uh, at each byte here graph. So in this lower right, you see the bytes graph. And by default, all eight bytes are selected. Now in this case, we can see that every single one of these is flatlined. That's not indicative of what we would expect a temperature increasing over the course of five or six minutes for which I, I captured this data going again from a cold start to uh, in the 60, 70 degrees Celsius, somewhere in there. So that's a quick indicator for CAN ID 56F, not it. So let's go down to the next one, to 640. Now, if I look at this chart, check this out. I see a couple of lines increasing here. So the red one is byte number three, and the black one here is byte number two. The rest of these look to be flatlined. The green one, so that would be byte one. Uh, that's like a gray color. That looks to be four. It's blue color. And then at the very bottom, we can see, if I scale this in a little bit, we can see some changing values here, but that's gonna be something else. That's not gonna be temperature. All right, so we know that these ones down here, so byte zero we could ignore, the yellow one byte five, and byte seven. We could figure out what those are later, but we don't care about that right now. So let's scale this back out. And so now we could see two values increasing. Now, water heats up faster than oil, the density of oil versus water, water heats up faster. So I expect this red line perhaps is my water temperature line. And remember, we know we started at a, about a nine or 10 degrees Celsius base temperature before I started the engine. And we'll, we'll do the conversions here once we set the scaling factors to see if we're right. But I suspect we're onto it here. So this continues to go up until I shut the engine off. I could let this go until the engine's completely up to operating temperature. So once it gets up to say 190 Fahrenheit or about 100 Celsius, 90 Celsius, it would flatline. And that would also help us confirm that this is uh, water temperature. So we know now that we are looking at CAN ID 640 and we're looking at bytes two and three. Three being what we think is water temp and byte two being oil temperature. So that's our clue. So now we're gonna go back and edit our DBC file to go ahead and add this new CAN ID 640 with byte two and byte three. And we'll see if we can uh, graph this out and see what we get. So let's do that. All right, so I'm gonna close this window. I'm gonna go back up to my DBC file manager. We're gonna edit the DBC that we've already started. So we already got 105, so I'm gonna say a new message, double click it, and this is going to be 640. We know it's an eight byte frame length. We can change the message to, we'll call this temps, because we think oil temp is in that same CAN ID, which would make sense. Water temp, oil temp being in the same CAN ID. It's logical. All right, so let's close this, and then we need to create a new signal within the CAN ID 640, so I'll double click that. Now, remember we were looking at bytes two and three. So I am going to make a guess that it's gonna be a full eight bits. And remember, we gotta check our little endian, the byte order. 
By the way, LSB stands for least significant byte. Zero is the least significant, least significant bit. Bit seven is the most significant bit. So that's all that means. You'll see that different nomenclature, depending on what tools you're looking at. LSB for least significant bit, which is also known as little endian, uh, which is also known as Intel. I'll get into that in a little bit. There's Motorola versus Intel. Motorola is big endian. Intel, little Indian. Again, just nomenclature that you may run across as you're as you're investigating and learning about about some of these things. Okay, so that is there, and we think this is going to be water temp. So we'll leave that there. I'm going to leave the scales the, the default, and we're just going to add this for now. So I can close this. I'm going to add another signal to what we think is going to be oil temperature. So again, eight bit in, bits in length, but this time it's byte number three. So I simply click here to tell the software, Savvy Can in this case, that we're gonna, we need to look at byte number three, all eight bits for oil temp. So I'm gonna type up here, oil temp. Again, I'm gonna leave the scale and all these the same. We actually know the units are gonna be Celsius, but I'll leave that once we once we get to putting the scaling function in here. Okay, so we'll leave this. Now, we're gonna go ahead and save this file. I'm just gonna save this off. I get, a get in the habit of doing this, just so I don't lose my work if this thing happens to crash. Again, open source software, it does crash sometimes, so you wanna be cognizant of that. All right, so now, if we go back and we play this data again, I'm gonna come over here. We're going to interpret frames and we'll see I've got an error. So this is actually a good example. I've got a black line in here and it's not interpreting any of my frames. This is a case where I think I might need to restart SavvyCan. Again, being open source software, there are some bugs in it. It's not bug free by any means. Sometimes I have to go and restart the tool. So let me go do that and I'll come back and then we'll then we'll see this. All right, I went back and restarted SavvyCan. I already loaded up my playback file and now we're gonna go ahead and click play and replay that same file we've been working with. Now, if I come back over here and click interpret frames, expand all rows, you can see here we've added water temp, and what we think is oil temp. Now again, this is just raw decimal data values. We have not converted them to the actual value, which in this case will be Celsius. Okay, so but you can see here that these values are growing. Now what I noticed is I got these backwards. I defined water temp, which should be oil, and then oil temp should be water temp. And the reason I know is again, remember, water heats faster than oil, and you can see the the uh, the values here are swapped. That's easy to go and change in the DBC file. I'll just rename them. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll do that very quickly. So let's go up into my file manager, load my DBC file. We will change oil temp to water temp. Close this. And then water temp to oil temp. Close this. Close. Now, if I come over here, now I can see my values are reporting proper. Water temp is higher than oil temp, but they're both steadily increasing, which is what I would expect as the engine temperature climbs up as it's, as it's warming up and running. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is we need to put in a scaling function. I don't know what the scaling function is on this. So what I'm gonna do is show you how I can use a DBC file that I found out on the interwebs and we can use that to figure out what our water temp scaling functions and, and scaling function for oil temp in as well. So back over under my DBC file manager, I'm gonna load a DBC file and I've got saved off here a couple different ones. This one, and again, I'll link all of this in the description below, but this is for a VW Golf, a Mark IV VW Golf. I'm gonna open this one and simply double click it. And again, given this is a DBC file, I can now inspect all of the values that are in this DBC file. So you can see here, 
There's a whole bunch of them, and these are all predefined for you, which is nice. This is this somebody went through a lot of work to figure this out for all of these can IDs. I'm simply going to look for temp and click search. And let's see, master one again. A lot of this is in German, so get your German translator out. This is again where Google is your friend, and you can go and find some of these. There's also another tool called Kvasser DBC Editor. Again, I'll link that here below. That's a Windows-based system. A little bit easier to read and find out and, and look for that. So why don't I flip over to the Kvasser DBC Editor and then we can quickly identify to see if we can find a scaling function for water temp that we can use. So let me flip over to that. All right, we're over here on my Windows laptop now. We're gonna use the Kvasser Database Editor tool to go ahead and reverse engineer. So I'm gonna launch Kvasser here, and I'm simply gonna open that same file I just showed you on SavvyCan. I'm gonna do that here. So let me go find it. BW Golf, and there we go. It loads all of these attributes, can IDs, for, that are have been defined for this DBC, for this car. I happen to know that it's in one of these motor and you'll notice when I choose a can ID it's Kvasser lists the can ID in decimal not hex we're used to looking at it in hex but this is decimal so it's a little tricky to go back and forth between the two but you can see down here when I click on the can ID all of the different can messages are embedded within so we can see engine speed and if I look on the far right while a lot of this is still in German somebody went in and converted this to English in the comment field which is nice it's super helpful so you can see my scaling factor this was the scale we set in savvy can 0.25 for the RPM that's how I knew 0.25 was the right function so we could see throttle position is also here we've already located that as well and we see the scaling function or in this case Kvasser likes to call it the factor. Again, that's all in here. So this is what I do is I use the DBC files that are out on the internet. And again, I'll link below in the description various locations where you can find a handful of DBC files that can be referenced. But this is how I start to reverse engineer the scaling functions or factors in this case that I can create, use to create the DBC file for the Ultima, okay? So we're going to go through, and on this Signals tab, this shows all the signals regardless of the CAN ID. Okay, so what I can quickly do then is go down here and look for temperature values. Start at the top of this list, and we'll just scroll down. Again, I'm just looking at the unit column here, and we're just going to look for anything that has Celsius in here. And there's one right here. So that is, I happen to know that one is exhaust gas temperature. Okay. That we don't care about at the moment. So let's look for some more. Okay. So here we go. Here's some down here. And I had forgotten I'd done this. I went and renamed the, converted the language from German to English. So you can see down here, I've got coolant temp, oil temp. Okay. So in this case, let's look at coolant temp. Eight bit length with a 0.75 scale or as Kvasser likes to call it a factor with an offset of negative 48. We need to take these values and input them into our DBC file for again water temperature and you can see for oil temperature the factor there is no scaling factor it's just one with an offset of minus 60 so it's slightly different all right, and that's important to pay attention to these. You have to get your scaling factors and your offsets right, or the numbers will be reported wrong in your dash or wherever you're going to report the data after you do the, the translation via the DBC file. All right, so I'm going to take these values and we're going to input them into my SavvyCAN DBC that we've been working with, so then we can graph them out and see if the numbers make sense. We are back in SavvyCan. I'm going to go back to my DBC file here and we're going to edit, find it here, nested in all my windows. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, let's remove that. 
Let's go back to my DBC file for the one we're building and go to my temps, oil temp. Now again, as I took in my notes here, oil temp has a factor of one, so a scale of one, factor and scale again, depending on which tools you're looking at, you gotta kinda, they call them different things, scale or factor. And then the offset or bias, bias is the same thing as offset, it's going to be minus 60. And then min and max doesn't matter. We know the units is going to be Celsius. So we can leave that. Then we'll go into water temp. And per my notes, water temp has a factor or scale of 0.75 with an offset or bias of minus 48. Okay, done. Now, if we go back in here and we replay this file, let's play it again. We can look at, check it out, starting temp, 10 degrees Celsius, which is exactly what the scanner, the OBD2 scanner, said before we started the engine. That was our starting value. As we're running this, and I'm playing back the speed pretty quickly here, you can see these temperatures are rising pretty quickly. Uh, which is good. I'm, again, I'm just playing the speed back much, much faster than real time. Now we can go ahead and graph these things. So let's go ahead and do that. Back up to my tools. Let's go to a new graphing window. Right click, add new graph. And now we can see we've got not only Evo, but I've got temps because we've defined that can ID. I've got oil temp and water temp. Click oil. Select copy parameters, add to graph. I'm gonna add another graph. We'll go to water temp, copy parameters, add to graph, right click, and I'm gonna rescale to data. And here we go. We can see the values I've got here. This one, water temp, this one, oil temp. Again, it starts at we scale this in a little bit. Again, starting at around 10 degrees Celsius, which is exactly what I would expect. And scale this down and then goes up to right about 60, right about 60 degrees when I shut the car off. I estimated it was 75 when I wrote the file, but it was 60 degrees. So. Now we've got oil and water temp. And again, we can go confirm this against the values in real time and look at a OBD2 scanner or VCDS and make sure the numbers are identical, that they match. That's the idea here. And that's part of the validation that you've got your scaling or your factor correct, your bias or offset correct. That's how you would go about doing that just to confirm the data is what it should be, okay? So cool, so we've got four can IDs, or two can IDs with four bits of telemetry defined. Throttle position, brake, RPM, water, and oil temp. That's how I go about doing some of this reverse engineering. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is, I'm gonna show you how I went and found intake air temperature as well. That's a little trickier uh, to find given that in ambient environment, the temperature doesn't fluctuate that much. So I manually put some heat to it to see if I could, again, reverse engineer it, just like I did with water temp and oil temp. But this time we're gonna use a heat gun to find the intake air temperature. So let's flip back into the garage and we'll take a look at how I did that one. I've got VCDS open here. It's connected to the ECU, which is powered up. And I'm looking for intake air temperature. Currently, it looks like it's 28 Celsius. So what I've done here is I've taken off the one of the math sensors here. You see, I just took the tube off. What I'm actually gonna do is blow some air through that thing, some warm air with the heat gun, and then watch the change over here on VCDS. So let me do that. I'm just gonna turn it on here. Low is all it takes. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna watch that value as I blow some air across it. So you can see it's going up. 30, 31, perfect. So 
We know that's the right signal. All right, I just cranked up the heat on this thing. Let's put some heat to this thing and see how quickly it climbs. So here we go. And the pie. Oh yeah, look at that. That's awesome. All right, cool. Let's get the uh, CAN bus sniffer going and figure out what the CAN ID and bite function is for that piece of telemetry, intake air temperature. All right, I've got Savvy CAN, my CAN sniffer going here. Engine not running, but ECU is turned on. So notch, and you can see all the ID values that it's got here. Now I can look for things that change. Deselect, I'm gonna do none of them, and then my filter goes away. And I know just from experience now that the temperature is probably somewhere in the 300s. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna select all these, three, four, five, six. So that's good, so let's try that. So pretty quiet. I've got this one, 641, that's kind of coming and going periodically. It looks like a counter actually, it's counting up once a second. So, all right, so let's get the heat gun going here. I'm gonna blast some heat, again, into the intake tube, and then we're gonna watch and see what, see if we can notice, notice anything changing here. So here we go, I'm gonna turn heat gun on. All right, so we see that number there. 86, it's going down a little bit. Now I'm gonna pull the heat away. We should see it go down in red, 7E. All right, so that is 640. That is attribute six number 40 and it's bite number one. So I'm gonna filter everything out except for that one and then we're gonna graph it. So let's do that. So I'm gonna do none here, 640. So now all we're looking at uh, can ID 640, bit number one is what we're looking at. All right, so now let's go over here and graph this thing. So I'm actually gonna close the sniffer. I'm gonna come over here. We're going to do a new graphing window. I'm gonna add a new graph. I'm going to select the signal, 0x640. And we know it's byte one. Data length is eight bits. A little Indian. All right, and I think this is gonna be air intake temp. All right, so let's add this graph to the chart here. I'm going to rescale to the data. And there we go, we could see some activity. So this is real time here. So what we're gonna do now is put the air to this again and watch this graph, all right? Let me move this over, give myself some room here. So you can see that number is marching along, it's going down. So now I'm gonna put some air to this. And there it goes. Climbing, climbing, climbing. Climbing. Air off, and we should see it come down. And there it goes. So now we know that's the only thing we're changing is putting air to that MAF sensor, and we can see the data changing. So now we can map this into my DBC file, and with the DBC file, I can add it to the dash. And then we'll have intake air temperature. Pretty cool. All right, now that we have intake air temperature, we're going to add that to our DBC file. So I show you how I did that with the scaling factor and the bias. So we'll show you that and we'll show you the finished product as it, as it relates to the DBC file. So let's take a quick look. So I'm gonna go up here to my file, DBC file manager. We're gonna load 
the completed DBC are almost complete. I've still got a few other metrics I've got to collect, like gear position. There's one or two others I've still got to figure out. But for the most part, I made good progress on this. So here is my Ultima DBC file. Let's open this up. And you can see I've got a few in here. First of all, under can ID 105, as we saw and how we did that, brake pedal, RPM, and throttle position. I've also got transmission temperature. I was able to find that. So over here, that was going to be on can ID 441, byte number 7. Again, the bias negative 60. And I did put max and min values in here as I finished up, kind of tuned up this file a little bit. So that's transmission temp. And then under CAN ID 640, we found three different temperature, which again, you would expect these manufacturers are grouping these things together. So we have intake air temperature, which we just saw. Let's open this up. You can see that's byte number one, as we saw, with a scaling function of 0.75, a bias of minus 48. And again, I found that off from the sample VW DBC we looked at earlier. Same thing. I just looked at looked up air intake temp in that file. It just reused the scale and bias values here uh, as well. And then oil temp is in here. We saw that already. And then water temp as well. So bytes one, two, three, back to back to back, three different temperatures. So it's pretty efficient the way VW in this case, Audi put together their CAN bus IDs and that they grouped a lot of the same attributes together, in this case, temperature, all in the same CAN ID, which is pretty cool. All right, guys, so that's gonna be it for this video. We saw how we went and reverse engineered from raw CAN bus values to actual human readable values via the DBC file, the scaling function, how we used sample files, DBC files out on the internet. Again, all, everything is linked in the description below. The software I used in this video, the reference DBC files that you can use for various manufacturers. So that, again, you can kind of help, helps you reverse engineer finding bias value, scaling or factors, those types of things that we talked about. In the next video, we're gonna go ahead and now take this DBC file. I'm gonna walk you through on how to create the dash in MoTeC. So we're gonna use the dash manager software the display creator software that MoTeC offers with their series of displays. I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how I went ahead and created a display using all of these values off the CAN bus, and then we're gonna put it in the car, upload it, and test it. Start the car, get it up to operating temperature, and make sure all of my CAN IDs are mapping uh, properly on the dash. So until then, we'll see you next time.